feels like old times. Yes. Welcome on in uh, to a sad post-game edition of the PHNX D-backs podcast presented to you by our friends at Desert Financial Credit Union. My name is Derek Montia. Of course, I am your mayor of the World Series, uh, and I am also <laughs> currently in hiding from my feelings. <laughs> this woman next to me, of course, is our social media goddess, the one and only Michaela Perkins, who I might have some energy left to yell, but I don't know. They might have robbed her of, of all of that spirit. And of course, the voice of reason in the room this afternoon. This afternoon? What? I don't even know what time of day it is anymore. It I'm is just 9 sad. Just I, it's, I'm in a, I'm a pit of darkness right now. Uh, the voice of reason this evening is the one and only Patrick D. Lyons, a.k.a. Patty Plantain, a.k.a. The Hot Tag, uh, here to uh, at least let us know that there's more games to be played. But, of course, this one stung especially bad. You know when someone hits you with that childhood trauma? You know when someone brings back something that <laughs> used to just only hurt you uh, at one point in your life? You thought you moved past it? You thought you couldn't feel that kind of pain anymore? Yeah. That's that's what I felt in the ninth inning watching Arizona Diamondbacks closer uh, give up a lead yeah. late late in the game because that mm -hmm. was not um, fun. Not fun. Not fun. It just like I don't want to get too high and I don't want to get too low because this is a seven game series. We I'm going to get very high and very low. <laughs> We still have six games <laughs> left to work with, so I'm not trying to like doomsday button it or anything at all, but it just hurts because this game was so winnable. They winnable. had the lead for the majority yeah. of the game, and it was so winnable, and it would have been so great to come out and open game one of the World Series on the road with a win, and it just like was crushed, yeah. and it sucks. Watching the win slip through your fingers is heartbreaking, yeah. right? I mean, that's all you could say. If you would have said that the Diamondbacks end up winning or losing this game. Like, if you told us beforehand the outcome, we would have been like, oh, all right. That's like, it sounds like they put up a good fight. Like, if they like, all right, they're going to lose. Don't mention how many innings. Don't, don't you know, mention how many innings. No, innings. because already they mean something kind yeah, of maybe Yeah, that's true. That's true. But, like, yeah, like being like six to five, they're going to lose six to five. You'd be like, all right, that's, I mean, it's not, it's no 10 to one loss that they suffered against the Phillies in the NLCS, right? So it's like, it's not a demoralizing loss or anything like that, yet, Somehow it is because of the way it occurred, right? Being so close to winning this game absolutely made it feel like a crushing, demoralizing victory. There's definitely loss, something, I should say, there's definitely something to this psychology, like you said, because Zach Gallen did not have his best stuff. We'll talk about that. Sure. But that's unfortunately been a little bit par for the course, especially <laughs> yeah. when you look back at uh, the NLCS against the Phillies and you go, okay, that's disappointing, but you've been in this place, uh, you've been in this position before and still won games. And yeah, they were up 5-3. And the bullpen was a little bit shaky at times. Ginkle threw uh, more pitches than you would have liked to have seen yeah. there uh, in the eighth inning. And then, you know, obviously uh, after the 28 pitch eighth inning by Kevin Ginkle, no run scored. Yeah. Paul Sewald unfortunately gives up that two run, no doubt home run to Corey Seager in the ninth. And then all of a sudden we've got the first extra inning game this entire postseason in 2023 everybody in the bullpen was a little shaky tonight you could yeah. almost feel something weird happening right it felt off right like right. it felt unnatural i was like right. wait True. this is giving me like ptsd there, trigger like a, why do i feel like i'm watching the exactly. tiger from the blast a here? lot of like, walks <laughs> a lot of walks by the bullpen ten. yeah 10 walks paul seawald had three uh or no excuse me paul seawald had two uh zach gallon had four yeah ryan thompson had one Kevin Ginkle had one. Kevin Ginkle also had a hit that he gave up. Ryan Thompson gave up a hit. Like so, there was just there was a lot of there was a lot of men on base with the bullpen, and it was the Diamondbacks' most reliable guys. It was the guys that you wanted to see be out there. I know there are people that are going to ask. Yes, we did jump around. We did, uh, uh, but things got shaky before we could even post a video. So we decided. Maybe maybe that was what it was. Maybe we didn't post a video. Maybe that I, maybe this is on I, us. Listen, I, don't know. I recorded it and I sent it to you. She did. So she did. She is of no fault. <laughs> it probably falls on me. I just felt like, uh, especially once that home run went up, I don't think many of you would have wanted to see us jumping around. I know Zach Gallon probably wouldn't have wanted to see it because Zach Gallon definitely, you could say probably yeah, not his best stuff because we've seen him pitch during the regular season much better, but I definitely mean, not his worst uh, outing. Uh, he was he was I it's only the second time. Hold so on. only once during the regular season had he walked four guys. It so was the walks. It was the walks. It was the walks. The walks yeah. were inferior. But he hadn't given up four. Uh, he only done that once this yeah. entire season. So that was kind of a problem. He had more swing and miss, obviously, uh, uh, in in his uh, in his performance today with the five Ks. But it's the four two, walks. I think that definitely two to Corey Seager, and he scored good. on both of them. By the way, scored yeah, can on we both. Stop. Of them. But uh, pitching to Corey Seager. But I I, I think he's. 
<laughs> similar to the approach that the Diamondbacks took in the NLCS is you walk Schwarber, you walk Harper, hopefully those guys chase out of the zone and you're able to get everybody else out, which happened to be the case, uh, especially for for games six and seven with, with those guys in the middle of the lineup, uh, shutting them down in a big way. I think the yep. two guys you have to get out is Corey Seager and you do not pitch to Adolis Garcia, the no. guy who did not walk. No. That was the that was the one note of like, hey, what's the part of the secret thing. of the Diamondback success? <laughs> How are they going to win this game? Just don't throw Garcia a strike because he didn't walk once. He's just going to swing out of his shoes. And he did that on, on, on the walk-off at bat. He was down 2-0, swung at a pitch that uh, was almost in the dirt no. before Th- homering. I'm not, no, no Thunderbolt comments tonight. We are not going to be doom and gloom with Thunderbolt. The bat wagon <laughs> did not go off a cliff. But I will say that, uh, again, going back to Zach Gallen, he actually ended up being pretty good. I mean, he started rough. He allowed the walk to Corey Seager, uh, gave up two doubles to youngster Evan Carter, yes. uh, an RBI double there in the first, another RBI, or not RBI, but another double to him uh, there later on. I think it was the third inning. Uh, he also loaded the bases and walked in a run in the third inning. The walks killed him, but the outside of that, him. he did respond in a big way. He did not allow another hit after that point. Um, so uh, he he went five innings. Yeah, and he he didn't have his shit together early on, but he got his shit together. Uh, five innings, four hits. He gave up those three earned runs, those four walks, struck out five. But I think that that overall, considering if we were wondering if he was going to get back on track from the NLCS, I think it was encouraging, and I don't think it was as bad, uh, you know, as as it looked like it was going to be early on. You yeah. know, they they wanted to hand it over to the bullpen, and they did. And the bullpen did bend but didn't break for a while until we got to that ninth inning. And Paul Seawald uh, had his two walks. He also gave up, of course, the game-tying home run uh, to Corey Seager, who just knew it was a goddamn home run yeah, halfway through uh, his swing. He was screaming before the ball. <laughs> it reminds yeah. me kind of Alec Thomas's one where he was smiling while he hit it, right? Like, there's just times where you know you got all of it, and uh, he absolutely did. Uh, and the bullpen, obviously, is the big story here because – it has been so reliable that you just almost are taken off guard by yeah. this. I think that's why this loss feels a bit devastating tonight is because we have relied on the bullpen and the bullpen has delivered. And yeah. and now the Diamondbacks needed them in the biggest moment of the season. And unfortunately, Paul Seawald, who is the anchor of that bullpen, faltered. Yeah, it's a little it's a little unnerving uh, just because, like you said, you come into the series with the utmost faith in your bullpen based off the track record. They're, they've had this entire postseason. They've done nothing to not deserve our complete faith and trust yeah, absolutely. in every single absolutely. pitcher in that bullpen. Of course, there have been a little shaky moments, but for the most part, like it's been an outstanding performance for the bullpen. And when you look at these two teams on paper, the way that they match up in the areas that the Rangers fall short, the Diamondbacks succeed in the the areas that the Diamondbacks struggle, the Rangers exceed. So when you have your bullpen as one of those things for the Diamondbacks that you know you can rely on, and all of a sudden they're looking shaky, it's like, wait a second. The bullpen is supposed to be the Rangers' Achilles heel, not ours. Yeah. And so it's a little, like, unnerving because you're starting to, like, get your confidence knocked down a little bit, and you're like, okay, (laughs) well, this series might be a little bit more interesting than we were all anticipating when it comes to the back end of the pitching. Um, Like I said, I think it just it hurts more because this game was so winnable. and. Out of yeah. all the pitchers in the bullpen, Paul Seawold was not the one I saw giving up two earned runs late. I'm sorry, not the one. No. I didn't think it was going to happen. I no, he's our, no, he that's... is Pope Paul the Ninth, the saint, <laughs> savior of, of high leverage situations. And of course, we did not expect him. He is, yeah, I, no, you're, you're absolutely right, Michaela, is because you, you've been trusting those guys. And that, that's the recipe. The recipe is for the bullpen to come in that's and how they do that thing. That's how that's they how got, got here. And, and the, bullpen delivered, the bullpen delivered to get them here. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, and it was really only, and it was only Seawald, right? If that that home run doesn't happen. You go, yeah. All right, sure. You know, Gingle with the twenty eight pitches. You know, you you didn't want to see that. He's able to get out of the jam. That's that's okay. Ryan Thompson, you know, was able to do his thing. Joe Mantiply mm. was was I think really mm. solid. Um, but it's it's coupled with as you kind of touched on. You know, the Rangers bullpen is not good. They're very suspect. Like, who are yeah. the guys? Well. Uh, Jose Leclerc, I'm who has been used the guy. a ton. What the hell? John, <laughs> two Rockies him. legend John Gray. John Gray, who you know, think, he did give up a run yeah, in his previous hello. outing in the ALCS. There's, there's known know. baseball GM Elise <laughs> saying the Rangers bullpen was lights out tonight. Patrick, were you proud of rookie uh, Rockies legend John? Gray? Yeah, six and a third uh, scoreless innings pitch from the Rangers, and so you go, oh wow, like it's totally flipped. But again, it is just that one game that that happens, and and you do get something nice out of Kyle Nelson. You go, oh damn, yeah. Kyle Nelson. 
Got yeah. four outs in an extra inning ball game, yeah. like the first one of this postseason. That was very impressive. Uh, that in was the very World impressive. Series, and you go, that's okay, awesome. maybe that's another one of those lefty guys that can combat someone like an Evan Carter out of the three hole or Corey Seager. And so you go, okay, now there's now there's three lefty options. We we didn't get to see Saul Frank, of course, in today's game, but it it is totally like how it it happened. And then the fact that Garcia like walks it off, it was almost like. Well, I guess that was inevitable. So that that doesn't even count towards. It's more of once the save was blown, it was it was kind of already over at that point. Yeah. Brian Brian McKnight is in our chat. I was a uh, huge fan of his in the '90s. So, I mean, that's exciting. I've uh, seen I've seen him a couple other times. Yeah. yeah I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that's legit. I mean, yeah. you, you used that Brandon Fought in here commenting on our stuff. I remember that. Can we go to some of our super chats? Because I want to celebrate our wonderful fans that are it's here okay. tonight. We thank you guys, of course, so much for being here. I again am in hiding, witness protection pro- program style. Uh, <laughs> uh, until the I'm hiding from my feelings is what I'm hiding. Uh, our guy Caleb Lindsay says if Texas didn't win this one. What would we even answer back to? We got this shit. I love yep. that idea. Love that energy. Love That's that true. energy. I'm going to try to exude some of that here in a moment. There piece of Yoshi, who still needs to change his Hi, Twitter piece of handle. Yoshi. Don't, don't, don't. I to love him. piece of Yoshi. No, absolutely. We have no beef. Yoshi. Uh, he's he's been following a couple he's people here. Attack the dot saying? race again. That's true. Things did turn once Jesse Friedman attacked the dot race. And Jesse, of course, will be joining us here later. Uh, I do like to out him when he gets spicy on the timeline under our title or under our, under our, our account. Tony, uh, thank you, Tom, Tony, so much. He said, tomorrow we are going to see what this team is made of for sure yep. after a tough loss like this on the game's biggest stage. Absolutely. I love that. Uh, Al Ucard, the ghost of Young Hyung Kim was strong with Seawald. My God, we were yelling that wait, when that wait, happened. guys, I have another fun fact for everybody. Ooh, no, I don't Hit like this fun fact. Uh, in spirit of <laughs> our favorite, Mr. Kim, the Diamondbacks have played in four World Series road games in franchise it. history. They have allowed a game-tying two-run home run in the bottom of the ninth in three of those four games. Gross. Gross. That's not that's wow. not a fun fact. Uh, for his for you history to repeat fact. itself, that is not the type of history I would I don't like want to that kind of history. Itself, so uh but that, but remember last time that sucks. remember last time what happened. They got that chip. <laughs> it's true. Uh Benjamin Hunley says, Can we move Walker out of the four hole, please? Ugh, we gotta uh, talk about let's, Christian Walker at some yeah, point. Yeah, Christian here. Walker uh, is currently hitting one sixty three uncompetitive in the postseason with a six fifty three OPS. Lost at the plate. He looks lost. He looks beaten before he's even swung his bat at times, and it's frustrating because that guy was so absolutely outstanding for this team at one point. We know he's struggled offensively at times, but, man, if if Walker could get going again, it would... It would make all the difference. Like, look at what one player difference. getting hot does. Corbin Carroll got hot in Game 7 of the NLCS, and it made all the difference in the world for these Diamondbacks. And if... If Christian yeah. Walker can just pull a Corbin yeah. Carroll and figure it out, just please figure made, it out. It could were, be the difference maker. We were talking about how cool he makes first base plays look, right, tonight when he made that amazing defensive play. But, yeah, there's just a couple of guys right now that are really struggling at the plate. Evan Lagoria hitting 146. Uh, Manuel Rivera hitting 167. I'm actually willing to get to give Walker somewhat of a pass, only because if, if you go back and look at the NLCS, the Phillies were not giving him a lot of pitches to hit. They were very okay. much okay with – putting Tommy Pham up there with runners on base and they got away with it a ton. And then you saw Tory kind of saying, ah, I guess Paven Smith needs to hit fifth for me now all of a sudden. So he took his walks. He got seven of them. That's only Schwarber got more walks, right? You think about how much Schwarber was put on first and then Harper was put on first by the Diamondbacks. Christian Walker was the exact same thing for the Diamondbacks. So yes, maybe I, I think there's, there's a lot of spots where Diamondbacks fans are looking at Walker going, you know what? Maybe, maybe you need to expand the zone just a little bit. Uh, to to drive the ball and maybe make something happen, similar to what we saw from Garcia in the eleventh inning, uh, mm-hmm. and we might start to see that. But again, I would not be surprised if Tori's like, just get on base, pass the baton. It's okay for right now if you're not, you know, expanding the zone in that way and swinging right. at at balls outside the strike zone. If they're going to give you a free base, take it. Take and they it. did get contributions uh, from a lot of pieces of this team offensively, right? So it's not like this team didn't yeah. uh, put up five runs tonight and hand it over. Uh, to the bullpen for them to take care care of it. Uh, Cattell Marte extended his hitting streak to 17 My games. My God. A historic. He now is tied for the longest streak in MLB postseason history, not just to start a, a career, but for the longest streak. Any point. At any point. The, that's MLB right. The baseball postseason. is a bowling ball to Cattell Marte. And it's wild. I mean, he's <laughs> There's just nothing been able he can't to, hit at this point. Uh, Perdomo, you know, Longoria, obviously Tommy Pham had 
uh, the big solo home run that that put the Diamondbacks on the board early with a, a leadoff solo home run. So the this I'll, I'll say this. This feels like a devastating loss because of the way it happened. Yes. But do not take anything away from the fact that we have mainstay Merrill on the mound tomorrow. Yeah. And this Diamondbacks team was literally a handful of outs, not even a handful of outs, just, just a couple of outs away from winning this game tonight. And if they did take game one, they would have absolutely had, you know, their their you know, the, the their foot on on the neck of the Rangers when it comes to this series. However, that still doesn't mean that that can't happen in game two. Winning either one of these two games in Texas absolutely puts all of the pressure. It steals, uh, you know, home home field advantage and puts it on the Diamondbacks and allows the Diamondbacks to potentially come back here and win three straight at Chase Field against the Rangers. I do not put it past them to do that, especially with Merrill Kelly on the mound tomorrow. But more importantly, I am just super encouraged by the way they played tonight. Yeah, the Rangers, they got they got their big moment, and I'm not happy about the way that this went. But I also think, like Michaela said, they, they they were inches away from winning this game at times. Like they were literally like it just felt like Paul Seawald, unfortunately, kind of, you know, he he left left that one fastball instead Swept of it being it up. up. I, I think it was a fastball. I thought um, that was a good location, to be honest. It was it was it, up and in a little bit. It was a little and, um, bit down. Gabby yeah. wanted it up a little bit higher than that, and yeah. so he did miss it. But it, it's a, that's at the top of the strike zone yeah. there. But I mean, we got through a bunch of those innings, obviously, you know. And and once we got past that fifth inning, you know, things stayed scoreless for both teams from that point on. Yep. You got to tip your cap because the Diamondbacks could only do the damage against Avaldi, uh, Nathan Avaldi, who's been very good once he left the game. They weren't really able to do much against the bullpen. So, uh, I mean, there's there's a lot of encouraging things, though, about this game going forward. And the Diamondbacks, or the Rangers did what they were supposed to do. They, they, they mm-hmm. won the game at home, but barely. But barely. Barely got away yeah. with one. If any fan base should not be discouraged by this loss and should just be kind of fine with it, I mean, it sucks, but be kind of fine with it, it would be Diamondbacks fans who can... <laughs> Diamondbacks are down 0-2 to Philly in a fortress. And then they had to yeah. win four of the final five and take the final two games in game six and seven in Philadelphia. The Globe Life Field is not a fortress. That's the that's <laughs> it's not. The, that for me, you're absolutely right. Like, it's not the being down two games to nothing. Because again, just like that series, that's what the Phillies were supposed to do. Mm-hmm. It was the loss in game five that gave Phillies the lead being up three to two meaning that the Diamondbacks had the improbable task of going to Philadelphia and winning two in a row. And really, the Phillies just needed to win one at some point. They had had their three wins. That was the most impressive part to me about that series. And I think that it's still carrying over because the Diamondbacks were able to generate the runs tonight. Tonight, it was a bit more about about the starting pitching. It was about the walks. and, And, I mean... Like the umpire was calling a terrible zone, but we're not going to, I'm not, I'm not even going to get on that because we don't have time for all that (laughs) shit. Um, But I will say that I'm just very encouraged by, you know, like the stolen bases. They did not relent on that. We had stolen bases by Corbin Carroll, Geraldo Prodomo, Alec Thomas, even though he's sad. Uh, (laughs) Of course, our producer, the people's producer, Damon, won some money on those. Those were absolutely juice bet. Cattell was the first one. That was the one that got American Tacos. Cattell, yeah. Let's not forget. That's right. And actually, I, I, this how is, dare uh, I not bring that And this that one is, up. Uh, Sarah Lang's reported on this. Oh, Four stolen bases uh, for the Diamondbacks. This is the fourth time this postseason that they've done it. They've actually... Uh, which is the most ever to have four or more stolen bases in a single game. And Diamondbacks have done it for the last three games in a row, yeah. too. So, again, they, well, they're back to causing that chaos on the base paths. And that's very encouraging. And, of course... Got you. You just you just gotta believe. You just gotta, gotta believe. Come, why not us? Don't, don't don't let us get one in Texas, Damon. Am I right? <laughs> Damon, do not Damon's let us get so one mad. in Texas. Damon's so mad. I, I know I, he's mad, but Damon, do I, not I let us get one in Texas. I haven't spoken the entire show. I'm just for a saying, <laughs> I am bro. An absolute shit. Bro, do not let us Hell get one nah, in Texas. Bro. Hell no, nah, bro. Do not get us Hell close. Nah. Hell no. Nah. Do not get us close. Get one in Texas. So you better watch your ass tomorrow because we'll come back strong. But course uh the king snake is the man making history who could make history and own that record tomorrow wow. solo uh is this guy could tell Marte doing big things uh looking look, looking incredible with those purple gloves on tonight <laughs> 17 game postseason hitting streak this man is a beast uh and honestly this is no different than what he did all season long 
he's just somehow more consistent here in the postseason <laughs> than he was, you know, while he was leading this team, even during the dark days. So yeah. Tell Marte includes to be incredible, our NL CS MVP. Uh, and of course, uh, doing it here still. So besides his RBI double too, he also had uh, a fielder's choice, just putting the ball on the ground and making right. sure to, to score a run, uh, right. obviously early on. So one thing about Cattell is he is going to contribute. It's true. Cattell yeah. a contributor. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he is a contributing Cattell. Um, well, I will tell you, uh, he is also part of a connected team who wasn't so connected tonight, but hopefully we will see them be a bit more connected to tomorrow and uh you guys know the deal a connected team is a fucking dangerous team so make sure to get the shirt of a dangerous team over at the phnxlocker.com uh, we thank you guys for being here in the phnx sports youtube channel tonight if you haven't subscribed already make sure to do so now sign up for notifications that way you don't miss when any of our wonderful shows go live leave us a review are you just playing music over there <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to bring up the spirit and the vibe no, a little bit. No, no, you're gonna, us, you're gonna get us a DMCA. I don't even know what song that is, but <laughs> no, I, this they'll is, know. They will know. This is free music. It's oh, free content stuff. don't you dare, it's, Patrick! It's good, don't, worry about <laughs> it. don't you dare, Patrick! Uh, anyway, thank you guys, of course, uh, for listening on the audio side. If you have not subscribed over there, make sure to do so. Uh, if you are a diehard, get that shirt for twenty percent off. If you are not a diehard, get your membership now, and you will get that shirt for free. Uh, make sure you drop us a like. We need the likes tonight. Uh, I say that just for my own own self-esteem i know these two probably feel the same way there's gabby gabby says drop a like we could have we could have used to see gabby a little bit more on offense tonight yeah, that's for goddamn nice. sure Hello, but, gabby. where were you uh, where were you gabby goodbye. you're too busy hanging out here waiting for us to do the show i get it it's Baseballs. fine buddy. That's we love you uh we'll never stop loving you because you're mr diamondback but uh <laughs> you know what Maybe you can call yourself Mr. Diamondback if you win some money on this team on the BetMGM Sportsbook app. Uh, of course, right now is a great time to get down on their mobile application. Uh, these promos will not be around forever, folks, so make sure to hop on this one. Uh, you can bet $10 and receive $200 instantly in additional winnings regardless of your wager's outcome using our code of PHNX. All you have to do is sign up uh, by downloading the Sportsbook Bet MGM Sportsbook app on iOS or Android or visit their website at betmgm.com to sign up and use that code of PHNX. Once you do, uh, deposit $10, place a wager in the amount of that $10 at a standard odds price or or more, or more, uh, whatever you want, but at least $10. And once you have placed a qualifying bet, you will receive $200 in bonus bets regardless of the outcome of your wager. And of course, there's some great thing. There's some great things you can do with that money. Like, I don't know. I'm um, fairly sure a lot of my bet from earlier uh, hit. I think until Marte got a hit, uh, Valdi got some <laughs> strikeouts. I think, uh, you know, so again, can hedge your bets emotionally. I think it hit. I think it hit too. It did hit. Oh my uh, God. Wow. So sometimes you can, you know, uh, try <laughs> Maybe to curse. Maybe reverse jinx, actually reverse the reverse part of the reverse jinx. I don't jinx know what happened there, us. but yeah, I don't know. Maybe what, you're not going to bet anymore. You're Maybe I'm not. not. I don't know. That's no how we more. got here. I can't stop doing the stuff I did to get here. Damon will get very angry with me if I don't. But of course, you can use the BetMGM app to actually try to make money. Don't do what I do necessarily, but it's still worth it for the $5 for me. It's like, uh, you know, like getting a speedy ticket in the rain it's worth it to make the cops stand out there but anyway uh you can sign up for the bet mgm app use bonus code of phnx place your first bet mgm sportsbook wager through the mobile application at least ten dollars you will receive two hundred dollars instantly in additional winnings regardless of your wager's outcome check out the show notes for full details and now listen to our baby boy shane talk about the disclaimer Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, Nevada, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming. Call 877-8-HOPE-N-Y or text HOPE-N-Y-467-369, New York. Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus to wager. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help, Michigan. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico, in partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., New York, or Ontario. I do Ontario. just want to say really quick. I know that it sounds like we're down and out and we are just a little bit upset, mm -hmm. but I did say at the top of the show, we're not going to get too high. We're not going to get too low. The only low. reason that this loss sucks, especially is just because they had it. They had it. It was in grasp and they just let it go at the last second, which is why it's a little extra disappointing. But I will say, I don't know why, but I just, I really needed to see how these, how the Diamondbacks stacked up against the Rangers. I don't know if it was just because it's been a minute since we played them. I feel better watching the game knowing that like this isn't like an undefeatable <laughs> titan like these this is a beatable baseball game or ba baseball oh, team you guys it. like the diamondbacks they can win the series like it is a very winnable <laughs> series for them 
It hit, didn't it? <laughs> Are you, you listening wanna, to anything I'm saying? I'm just sad because it hit. You want to put it up on the screen? Well, he's just like, oh, mad at it he's... hit. Ah. You got a dub on that, didn't you? <laughs> I hate you, Wow. Dad. I'm just, I, I, he looks like Cornholio over here with the hood up. And I, so I was doing the uh, I forgot about the Garcia and... home run I threw in there. That, that one hurts a lot, David. That one hurts wow, a lot. Wow, you, yeah, that's really, okay. anyway, you really made that happen. Thank you Not for cursing cool. us, Derek. Back to what I was saying. No, it's true. It's this is a winnable series. The Diamondbacks oh, yeah. are stacking it's up against game. the Rangers in a, in a way that makes me feel encouraged. Like the only reason I'm sad is just because this game, they were winning it. They it had it. They had it in the bag. And I swear to God, can we please stop pitching to Adolis? I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. No more. Shouldn't Just happen. Pitch around him, please. No, I hate it. And I'm excited that tomorrow Merrill Kelly gets to start because for whatever reason, Merrill Kelly is my grounding like mechanism. I have so much faith in him because I think he comes into games with a plan and a plan that he knows he can execute so well and I don't really feel that way about Zach Gallen like I feel like Zach Gallen has an idea of what he wants to do but he can struggle with the execution okay. Merrill I'm like Merrill has a plan Merrill knows what he's doing he knows how to pitch around good hitters everything's gonna be fine with Merrill Kelly and I said before the series started if the Diamondbacks were gonna win a game on the road it was gonna be game two so I still have time for it to happen yeah. the series is obviously far from over you just don't want to watch games like this when they are have the lead lose it but it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine this is a very winnable series well, it I'll is? tell you a good way to get over it. Stop by Circle K on your way out. Oh, I don't know where yes. you are. I don't know where you're watching it. Stop by Circle K. Studies show it's uh, awesome. It's studies to show. He's going to start. If he starts attacking Bucky's, I am not going to be here to defend the situation. Mikhail, because back me up. If I, you read a study that shows unequivocally <laughs> how great know, Circle K comes. is, no, and you report on that, best. Circle K is the how? absolute best. Um, a circle case. You're on my side. Yeah, and that's what, the thing. what is the debate? The debate. There's is, no is debate because studies he, show he circle K is better than Bucky's. That apparently he will go after local. Eighty percent of statistics are made up. Oh my God! There you go. Fifty percent of you said was true. Up. I will say that. <laughs> All right. Well, eighty-five percent of me thinks that Circle K is the best stop, and the other fifteen percent knows it is. Knows it is. <laughs> yes. That's right. But of that. course, America's uh, all stopping at Circle K <laughs> because it's America's third stop. Uh, and right now, you can save money on gas by saving or joining their inner circle <laughs> membership program for free by downloading the Circle K app it's today. Today, Junior. Terms and conditions apply at participating locations. Visit CircleK.com for details. Like I said, you can save uh, twenty-five cents per gallon on your first five Phillips. So make That's sure crazy. to That's not miss out. Deal. And it's free. So the you chips also are get, banging. Yeah, you the get, and you get free chips. They'll send you free coupons for chips, free coupons for candy, all sorts of stuff. So make sure to not miss out. You also get buy five, get six one free on a selection of Circle K products. So do not miss out. Join the inner circle uh, today. Well, I don't think this is going to make you feel any better, Michaela. Okay. But Adolis Garcia, earlier in the game, got an RBI, tied the all-time postseason record. That home run gives him the new home run. postseason record. Yep, five consecutive games. Five consecutive that games. That he has a home run. run. Yep. What does this man eat for breakfast? 17, 17th walk-off home run in World Series history. But he now has 22 RBI, most ever in a single postseason by a player. He does not only 13 games. The record was David Freeze in 18. So he already has the record. So therefore, he's not necessarily going to be like, you know, going out there to try to break anything. He's already broke it. So maybe he simmers maybe down. Maybe we're done. Um, yeah. Maybe also, simmers. you want to know the best part of all of that? Because I always take any opportunity to shit on the St. Louis Cardinals. The St. Louis Cardinals <laughs> traded him for cash considerations. <laughs> you idiots. But uh, yeah. now he's a pain in our side because he's playing also for the Rangers against game. us in the... Uh, World Series, but yeah, I'm tired of watching him hit a baseball, honestly. Um, I know the Rangers fans aren't, but I am. I don't know. I just, like, how I just, I want to know what he eats for breakfast. I'm here's so the, concerned about Here's this. the thing. What kind of salve did he put on that that he wrist of his? Ups. When he got plunked, I, 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 I made a note, and I was like, okay, this is going to be a huge talking point. This guy got hit uh, on the hand by Paul Sewald after the oh, home man. run, 92 that's, miles yeah, an hour. that's a great point. He's done. He's like, what does this mean? No. Are people going to be upset? It dot, looked, dot, dot, dot. It doesn't so matter. Painful, he painful stayed too. in the game yeah. and hit the walk-off home run. I, and and after he got hit, he immediately mm. stole second base. That was yeah. That was that That's was the most. Game. Yeah, he's a bionic it, he, man. He, he absolutely wanted to send a message that he was fine. I felt like with that steal, like that was incredible. Um, but Oof. yeah, I mean, what what can you say about it? I do know we have some videos from the clubhouse. Uh, do we have Zach Gallen talking about? I don't know if I want to. Hear. <laughs> uh, we have Zach Gallen talking fine. about bouncing back and not being down too much. Clip. Let's hear what he has to say. Yeah, I mean, we don't. I don't think we really count ourselves out. Um, you know, 
we went down 2-0 in Philly um, and battled back. So, um, you know, I expect nothing less from the guys, really. I mean, neither do we, honestly. Like, we know you, you can bounce back, Zach Allen. I'm sorry. He's just, I can't. No, I'm <laughs> proud of you for watching that clip because while it was going, Derek was reaching back on the shelf. If, if you could actually see it a little bit in frame. You know the thing, like, from Clockwork Orange, it was going to, like, pry your eyeballs open and force you to watch mm -hmm. it? He was about to grab that, but you just watched it completely on your own. Yeah. You're taking steps. That's a good thing. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Uh, she, didn't, she didn't like it, but she, uh, I, I get it. <laughs> I get, and again, I don't know. I, Zach Gallon, uh, of course, it would At be great. At least got more strikes this time. The last time he went out, he got one. He got five this time. Uh, there's uh, an improvement. I really, I was, really pitches. I was really impressed. I was really impressed with the way that he got things back on track. I really sure. was. And again, I he think that. He off track to begin with. Well, Sorry, that's, I digress. <laughs> that's, sometimes that's not under his control completely, <laughs> right? Sometimes the Rangers are doing stuff. 99 pitches, 61 strikes, yeah. six flyouts, um, a six ground, excuse me, three flyouts. So. You know, you'd like him to see him to uh, keep the ball on the ground a little bit more, similar to what Nathan Yavaldi was able to do. Although when Yavaldi came out of the game, he was the uh, losing pitcher of record at that point, anyway. So it's kind of, great um, it's kind of neither here nor there. So I'm wondering if if just him kind of lengthening out a little bit and going the 99 pitches could possibly help him. We know this has been the the most innings he's thrown in a, in a year. Obviously, the longest calendar. Maybe the one saving grace for him is the fact mm -hmm. that he didn't participate in the World Baseball Classic because um, there's five players in this World Series that participated. The WBC, Four and, of them are done, and only one of them is a Ranger. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, will that come back to to bite someone like Merrick Kelly? I don't think so because the WBC stuff was was kind of within everyone's you know preparation for spring training. So guys really sure. weren't weren't doing too much. But that being said, Gallon they were just should playing have higher goals. leverage, yeah. you know, higher leverage games uh, earlier at that than point. you would like. And, right, it's spring training, but right. it hasn't really impacted Kelly. And I think the fact that okay, this is the longest Gallon has gone. You know, maybe kind of shaking out some some more of the cobwebs in those ninety nine pitches over the five innings. Maybe that's that's something positive for when he goes out and takes the ball, presumably for Game Five in the series at home at Chase Field. You know how you guys loved giving out the fun facts earlier. We do, yes. I got some fun facts for you. Uh, hold, Michaela, hold on, hold on. We can v we can out vote him. We outrank him. There's two oh. to one. Are we going to allow him to have? Uh, Let's hear it. Derek. Fun I want to hear your version you of a fun fact. D backs are the first team since 2005 and the ninth team in MLB postseason history to record one double, one plus double, one plus triple, one plus home run, one plus stolen base, and one plus sacrifice hit in a single Ooh. World Series game. Great. Also, Evan Longoria. Thank you for your service with the sack butt. Evan Longoria. You. Per Optistats, I know this one has his first World Series hit uh -huh. in five thousand seven hundred and forty-eight days. That is the longest span of days between World Series hits in MLB history, surpassing the previous record of five thousand one hundred and seventeen days Eddie by Murray? Eddie Murray, Tony Gwynn, Tony Gwynn, Tony Gwynn. All right, I got I got a Longoria one, and then we're gonna we're gonna let, give Michaela an opportunity to have a, a, a Longoria fun fact because right, I mean that's that's the game we're playing now. I don't think I have any more. I know, I'm just chamber. kidding. I was, was, wasn't trying <laughs> to say you were failure. Out. I, I just put you on the spot. Her, her enthusiasm levels have sunk. To <laughs> all right, Evan Longoria. Low. Evan Longoria is the fourth player in World Series history with a hit at both age 23 or younger and 38 or older. Thank you, Sarah Langs, joining. Hall of Famer Eddie Murray, Hall of Famer Pee Wee Reese, Hall of Famer Willie Mays. Does, does that mean Evan Longoria now has to Whoa. be a Hall of Famer? Because he's on this list? Mm. All right, Michaela, what's your long go fact? <laughs> Come on now. We're bringing it. We're doing the fun fact I thing. I don't have any. I'm so She's sad. She's just done. She's done. Uh... Corbin Are we Carroll. talking about Corbin Carroll? Two RBI triple? Two, R two run triple in the third inning. The youngest Diamondback to record a hit in the World Series, surpassing Alec Thomas, who reached on the infield single two batters earlier in the same inning. <laughs> so, so Alec Thomas had just... a record for like <laughs> two, 14 he, minutes? He had uh, for two batters. <laughs> two batters. I think that's very on par with their Earlier in the so, same Two inning. minutes? <laughs> He's like, man, Maybe I can't like believe I broke seven. that record. Yeah. And Dave McKay's like, hey, run down to second. Your, your record just got broke. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, a lot of things happening. And, of course, uh, per the Fox broadcast, the D-backs became the first team in MLB World Series history to record uh, all of that stuff. Uh, the triple, the stolen base, and sacrifice bunt in a, in a single inning. So oh, they're, wow. They're setting all that stuff. Uh, they're, they're setting a lot of history. And I think, again, uh, you can't really hang your head too low. 
unless you're Paul Seawald, who I understand probably is, yeah. is probably pretty upset with himself oh, yeah. and probably should, not be, thrilled. <laughs> oh, I mean, the if Diamondbacks the, did, well, except for Christian Walker, a good job on offense getting those runs across the plate. Yeah. They had the lead for the majority of the game. And when you are the closer, you cannot do what Paul Seawald did. I'm just going to say this, though. If there is a team that knows Paul Seawald, it is a team that is in the AL West. Yeah, yeah right? that is true. So it's like it? the Rangers have seen plenty of Paul Seawald. And that's, right. that's one thing that is going to sometimes work in a team's advantage. Of course, we do have a bit more from Zach Gallen, who, uh, what was this one on there, Damon, if you don't mind? It was on the Rangers and their fight. Oh yeah, the Rangers. Oh, yeah, Rangers. Uh, the Rangers have not been. About the team just hey, they, 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 go they ahead, Zach Allen. No give up. No give up. And you know. look, <laughs> <laughs> we're, the clip. we're doing it. Let's go. Yeah, I mean it's a good team. I mean they were down um, three two in Houston, so um, it's not a team that rolls over. Um, but I mean there's there's reason to it. But they're still standing. I think you know kind of both teams have a lot of fight in them. Um, you saw that from their side tonight. I mean you saw that from us tonight. Answered back a couple times. So yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, listen, like both of these teams are here for a reason. They yeah. don't have any quit in them, either of them. They were underdogs coming into the playoffs. They have been underdogs throughout the entire series that all of them played. So they know how to fight. They know how to be scrappy. They know how to come back. So this series to me was never going to be a walk in the park. And I never understood people who weren't interested in watching this because to me, like I said earlier, they match up so well yeah. on paper. Like yeah. this is going yes. to be a knockout drag out fight to the two like nail whatever the saying is mm -hmm. series and that's what we got tonight this game was electric there were so many people that were saying like this is going to go down as like one of like a like a great world series game just in general and that's what i think you're going to expect from the rest of the series like i really think this is going to be a tough tough fought series and yeah. i know that he said like the rangers are a comeback team but the diamondbacks are too and so i fully expect them to bounce back from this but god it would have felt so good just to start off with a win on a high sure. with a one and oh start to the world series but we are where we are it's okay the diamondbacks are the answer backs it's gonna be fine well and this further builds on you know the rangers confidence uh, as in regards to being able to come back in situations just like this because like gallon said there this is what they've been doing and of course we have a couple of other videos here from the guys who were mostly responsible for tonight's loss we have miguel castro on what his plan was going into uh, his at bat against Adolis Garcia. Can you hear Corbin Carroll, maybe someone I'm not mad at. Sí, sí, sí. Realmente habían que mezclar los picheos, pero como te digo, los picheos no, 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 no fueron y a pesar de lo que pasó, realmente hizo un buen contacto y no, no, realmente como te digo, no hay más cosas. The plan was to mix up the pitches. They just, they just didn't work out. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Captain Obvious. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I also love how an interpreter's <laughs> job at time is to really condense down what someone says because so there was true. a lot more in there. But uh, uh, I mean, yeah, obviously they didn't work out. Diamondbacks, we were talking about the stolen bases uh, a minute or so ago. <laughs> Diamondbacks were six and zero oh this postseason when they stole a base. Obviously, as we discussed, they had four yeah. today. Yeah, yeah. Now today was the day. One. Today yeah. was the day they were trying to get it done. But I mean, you you say it's super obvious, and it might be. But at times, like, what more do you have to say? You yeah. know, like it's true. You went out there. You 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 thought that the mix of pitches that you were throwing was going to work. I mean, I'm sure he was letting Gabby make the calls behind the plate, and it just it didn't it didn't work out. But you got to tip your cap because both of those guys that got the job done tonight for the Rangers have been doing it for them all season long. Corey mm -hmm. Seager, that's the reason why they paid him all of that money to come over yeah. here, and that is the guy that did it here tonight for this team. And 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 Garcia has been just incredible. He has been – his legend has been growing this postseason, and, and of course, those are the guys that – you didn't want to see beat you, but they did beat you. And, I mean, I guess your option at times is to walk them or maybe take another course of action. Maybe the Diamondbacks will try to take another swing at this, you know, tomorrow, maybe come at those guys differently. But we got Paul Seawald here on uh, being frustrated with not doing his job against the bottom of the order here in tonight's game. It's such, such a potent offense, and, and you have to try and get the bottom of the lineup before the top comes up. And, you know, that's what I'll uh, that's what I'll be most frustrated with, was walking to Harris. And Seager's one of the... 10 best players in this league and you, know, you just got to try and face them with, with nobody on there. 
Yeah, I mean, like I said, when you looked at these two teams where the Diamondbacks lacked a little, the Rangers were stronger in that. And, you know, I think their offense is stronger than the Diamondbacks. They are at least more consistent. And the counter to that was our bullpen because our bullpen is way better than the Rangers bullpen. And so when you are not doing what you're supposed to be doing, when you are unevenly matched up like that, this is the result you're going to get. And I think that's also why it's just kind of hard to watch because it shakes your confidence a little bit. Like I said before, like you went into tonight knowing, okay, like we're facing a stacked lineup, like an absolutely stacked lineup. They are second in MLB in slugging percentage right now. Like they are on fire, but Hey, our bullpen's got us because they know how to pitch around these stars. They know how to locate. It's going to be okay. And it's not okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, Oh my God, <laughs> what do we do? But you, it's, it's, you hold them at bay for eight innings. Right. And you're like, yeah. okay, we, we, we got it. Like yeah. just three more outs. Like that was, that was it. What we were saying by watching the game, oh, three more outs, three more outs. And you go, so this is the guy, this is the savior. We know who this guy is. And that walk was killer. We knew that yeah. walk was killer, but can't of course, walk Tavares. You just no. you can't, can't walk Tavares. The number nine twice. hitter, not no. in the world. Number series. nine hitter, not in the world series. You can't. That's hard. That that's is hard. absolutely it. It's unacceptable. Can't yeah. do that, especially when you know who's coming up. And that's essentially what, what Seawald said there. Yeah. Because you 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 don't really have that freedom of, uh, you know, a free base or giving a free pass. Because I think you want to let Evan Carter beat you, the 21-year-old. 21 years and 59 days, second youngest player ever to hit third in a lineup. And so if you're walking Seager, you're getting Carter out, and then you're pitching around Garcia – either walking him half the time or striking him out because he's expanding the zone and swinging out of his, his shoes like Vladimir Guerrero Sr., then that's probably going to be the recipe and, and let the guys you know behind him possibly come through, Josh Young, Jonah Heim, and, and whoever, because it worked against the Phillies, and it, it, it didn't work tonight. You and it didn't work the first two guys, games against yeah. the Phillies, too. Yeah. It took them a while. Some, fastballs. Yeah, it took, yeah. Some while, uh, it took them a while to learn their lesson in regards to that, right? But yeah. I will say this is nothing like the Phillies. This is this is different, and I think the Diamondbacks almost did everything correct tonight. And they, yeah. you know, like this was just one yeah. of those moments. It was a good game. You True. gotta tip your it cap. Was a good game to Corey Seager, uh, and you cannot dwell on this because of how close the Diamondbacks were to winning this. Because this is a seven-game series. There is a lot of baseball left to play, and they absolutely have a chance in this series with the way they played tonight. So, totally. yes, that happened. There, you know, I, I think I would be much more discouraged if this was a six to nothing loss. If the Rangers just took it to them for nine innings and we didn't even have this chance to worry about Paul Seawald blowing it in the ninth because the Diamondbacks didn't even sniff a lead. Instead, they held a lead for the majority of the mm -hmm. game and it just so happened that things fell apart there late and you can't dwell on it. And you know, Paul Seawald specifically, who the Diamondbacks will need in this series to be at the at his yes. best, to have his, his have his confidence back, cannot dwell on it. And here he is talking about not dwelling on this loss. Uh yo, know, being a release pitcher, I never, you know, have time to dwell on it. Yeah. This is kind of how the game works. I, you know, I assume Tori's gonna give me the same exact chance tomorrow if I get if I get that opportunity. And like I said, I just have to I just have to execute better. Okay. Look at that big dad energy. Okay, Paul. What have I said about that? <laughs> Paul Seawald is the perpetual dad. He always has good advice for you. He's never, he's not, he's not a bad father like I am where I lose my <laughs> shit at times. No, he's always calm. There's always a lesson to be taught. And no matter what, that we will wake up tomorrow and there will be blue skies tomorrow and we will try again tomorrow. Paul Seawald, even when he gets us lost on that family vacation, sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes we don't end up at the dinosaurs in the middle of the desert between here and, and California. Sometimes we just run out of gas on the side of the road. And you know what? And that's that's dad's fault. But dad is still somehow going to comfort us and tell us sometimes in life stuff goes this way. But you know what? Well, don't worry about it. We got we got triple A. They're going to come fill up our gas. And we'll sometimes this out. dad just gets a shit rocked every once in a while. And tonight I got shit <laughs> you, you believe it or not, you guys are more upbeat now. You guys are actually I'm talking feeling myself better. into being more upbeat. Don't dare. Yes, because he's running it again, it Damon. No, Derek, Patrick, Patrick's Michaela. doing it again, Damon. Michaela and Montia oh, show. Oh, my okay? God. As your, as your third mic. Here's the thing. As we've kind of been saying in roundabout ways, the Dynamax were one pitch away yeah. from taking game one of the World Series. I they know. lost. I like it when you say it that way, though. But you it flush it. it worse that they lost. You flush it and you move through. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. But again, they didn't lose way. by maybe six pitches when you lose six nothing. Usually it's not that many. But nevertheless, it was one pitch. And again, we're not even focused on the 11th inning because at that point you're like, what? Ryan Nelson? Yeah, I, I get I mean, it. It's Kyle Nelson. 
Uh, yeah, I guess someone's got to go out there. Miguel <laughs> Castro, Kyle Nelson sure, you're a body. So good. Which Give is Kyle so Nelson his flowers crazy. tonight. Sure. Good sure. job, Kyle. But at that point, fine. that point, he the vibes are gone. Kate's kind of right. I can't believe they pitched Garcia in that I know. situation I, either. Yeah, I that's swear still, to God. We, I, Barry stings. Bonds treatment for him the rest of the yeah. series. Yeah. Patrick, yeah. did you say walk him? Yeah. Anyway. Garcia? I thought you I think you might have mentioned something about walking. Yeah. Oh yeah, Seager and, and Garcia, up. you should walk. But he I'm gonna say half walk. the time you're not even gonna walk him, half the time he's gonna strike out because he's gonna expand the zone. Like, please, for the love of God, no, no more. I can't he, watch Adolis hit any more baseballs. It he, is jarring. Patrick brings up a good point about expanding the zone, and I have the perfect transition over to let you guys know if you're expanding oh. any of your zone, oh. including your house, okay. including a room in your okay. home, including most importantly, your flooring. Oh, okay. I have the perfect oh. company to do it with. And of course, you that tell. is Empire Today. <gasps> uh, Empire Today, Empire uh, of course, today. will get you uh, all of that home convenience for all of your flooring needs. They'll get you the right product for everything that you need and a quick and professional installation and a price match guarantee. Uh, Empire Today is the best place to get new flooring. So, of course, they do have copycats, but you have been hearing that very famous jingle for a very long time for a reason and that's because empire today can't be can't be beat on quality service and speed they won't promise the lowest prices because anyone who is doing that is putting flooring in your home they wouldn't put in theirs but i'll tell you this much you're never going to get a half done job with empire today which is something that you can get when you go with those fly-by-night flooring companies in some cases here you even see they don't they don't even not only do they not get the job done but they will not stand by their work they will not come back and repair it when uh, you know, damage happens and, and the flooring does not go the way that you want it to. So make sure to miss out on Empire today. Uh, it is the place to go for all of your flooring needs. And of course, their philosophy is to find what you need, not overwhelm you with thousands of choices and substitutes and make sure you're happy in the end. So make sure to check them out. Of course, you can schedule a free in-home estimate. All listeners can receive a $350 off discount when they use promo code PHNX. Restrictions do apply. See EmpireToday.com slash PHNX for details. They've been around forever. Empire Today. Today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, uh, when we talk about great Valley uh, partners that we are working with and a great way for you to spend your money and your time is to check out Gila River Casinos oh, yeah. and Resorts here in town. Of course, we are so excited to partner with Gila River Resorts and Casinos. It's Arizona's biggest and best resorts and casinos. And if you need a staycation, especially <laughs> after a very hectic postseason yeah. run. Once these Diamondbacks get this thing done, you need to take a vacation, a staycation here in town. Make sure to check out Gila River. Of course, they have all sorts of fun games to play, including games you don't even have to go down to the casino to play. You can get down on uh, free, uh, fun, free games online for a chance to win $1 million cash. Sign up for Gila Rivers Resorts and Casinos. $1 million Big Red Showdown. Stay in the game and get rewards. It's that easy. Uh, of course, you can. they also have weekly pick where you can win up to $1,000 in free bonus play every week. And monthly drawings, which are going to occur on November 5th and December 3rd. Those are the next drawings. Uh, for all sorts of things, including Cardinals game tickets, memorabilia, and free bonus play prop cards for select football games. So do not miss out. Visit GilaMillionDollarShowdown.com to get in on the action. For more information on Gila Rivers Resorts and Casinos and all they have to offer, head to PlayAtGila.com. Love love that place. Uh, I get, it's, it's hard to pry me out of there once I get there. But, of course, uh, we wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't have an official report from our guy on the spot oh, in, in Texas hey. at yes. the World Series. It's none other than Jesse Friedman. Jesse uh vibes are vibes weren't great here they're picking a up low, a little Jesse. bit but how are vibes with the arizona diamondbacks after what we kind of feel like was a, a fairly devastating loss considering the way it happened yeah they're not they're not as positive as you guys seem to be uh it seems <laughs> like you know you guys are you guys are uh you know finding some right. silver linings here and we there did. we're it trying a, a pretty a pretty rough loss for the diamondbacks but yeah i mean at the end of the day Paul Seawald can't be perfect every time out, right? Correct. And he has been Correct. basically perfect every time out up, up until this point in the postseason. And, you know, Kevin Ginkle didn't allow a run. He also, he still has not allowed a run in the postseason, but he looked pretty shaky in that inning. A lot yeah. of Diamondbacks relievers look shaky in this game, you know, whether they gave up runs or not. Unfortunately for Paul Seawald, you know, it was a, you know, a massive two run home run. Everybody knew it was gone off the bat. Um, and yeah, I mean, as you, as you heard there in, in some of those videos from, from Seawald, he's, 
It's really tipping his cap to, to Corey Seager, who is absolutely one of the best hitters in this game. You know, if it weren't for some guy named Shohei Otani, Corey Seager, I think, would be the, the clear winner of the AL MVP award. He had an outrageously good season, uh, even though he was, you know, was injured for part of it and was still, you know, the, probably the second most uh, easily, I would say, the second most valuable player in the American League. And then, you know, Adolis Garcia didn't quite have the same regular season numbers that Corey Seager did. But in the postseason, my goodness, Adolis Garcia has been outrageous uh here in the postseason he has i think 22 rbi now in the playoffs which is something which is just absolutely outrageous he's basically averaging two rbi uh per game which is uh which is what he did today so i guess it's just an, another average day at the ballpark uh here in the playoffs for for adolis garcia but yeah i mean this diamondbacks bullpen has been really 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 good for you know the last couple months really and and today it, uh, it was a bit of a reality check right they're not going to be able to do that every single time Diamondbacks uh, offense, I think, is sort of, uh, you know, maybe gotten into this practice of every time we give the bullpen, a, you know, a two run lead in the sixth or seventh inning, we're going to we're going to win that game. And it's not quite that simple. The D-backs offense was not productive at all in the last few innings. I, you know, they maybe had some opportunities to tack on that they weren't able to take advantage of. And it ends in, you know, a, a pretty rough six five loss here in game one. Jesse, piece of Yoshi, who has. Hashtag fired Derek and hashtag fired Damon as part of his Twitter handle <laughs> might be adding hashtag fired Jesse because uh -oh. he is blaming you. If we could get to his super chat, I guess uh -oh. I have to thank him for it. Uh, but he also says, Jesse Friedman, why did you attack the poor dots? <laughs> It was really lame. Can we just be honest? Like a race, it's a stupid. race of it's different like colored stupid. dots. What? Did anybody? Can someone give explain you, this? Yeah. Did anybody give you any what explanation is the as to? Yeah, are they what, dipping dots? What are Maybe? the dots? Yeah, I haven't received any explanation. I tried to do a quick Google search. I think it's been around for like a pretty dang long time. I think it's that's what like language, Jesse. Tradition. Wow. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're they're different colored dots, and like, why is that fun or interesting? It just seemed terrible. Not, but it's not. You know, we got not. we got presidents running in Washington D.C. We have legends cool. running in Arizona. Cool. Of course, we have the brats. And the hot dogs yes. and the chorizo racing each other up there. The Anchorman the cast in San Diego. That's the, my favorite one. They ha oh, that I completely forgot about that. Yeah. The Anchorman so cast. But Texas yeah. has dots. Dots. multicolored dots. Probably Ooh. some dumb partnership. I mean, at least at least they're different colors. Like I guess you pick your no. favorite color and you're no. supposed Imagine to Imagine if they were all one, blue. But... <laughs> so yeah. just, I have to ask this. Are we wrong for still trying to be positive here? Because I know obviously this falls on Paul Seawald and the way things went. And like you said, maybe e even looking at the bullpen, the bullpen has been taxed quite a bit. And we saw a bit of that tonight where none of these guys were really perfect. But maybe at times we do just expect so much out of them that when they give up a walk and a hit, that's not a perfect night, even though they didn't allow a run. And most of these guys were still very good for this team. It just felt like, if the Diamondbacks would have gone out to Texas and lost this game, you know, again, five to one, six to one, six to zero, something like that, uh, and, and Seawall didn't blow it, I would be more discouraged by that than I am by this game that they almost had and they kind of just lost there in the closing moments rather than, you know, not not really having a chance in one. And, and again, if they can steal one of these two games at Texas, then that really does feel like it puts them in the driver's seat uh, for this series. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if the Diamondbacks take uh, take game two tomorrow and this is something Paul Seawald also said, you know, you feel pretty good about a split on the road and the Diamondbacks yeah. still have an opportunity to do that. This one is I mean, it's tough. It's really tough because, you know, I mean, it was right there for you. Right. I mean, the Diamondbacks led basically this entire game. I know the Rangers got up early, but. Uh, you know, that didn't last too long. The Diamondbacks eventually got to, to Nadia Ovaldi, which is really impressive. Yeah. You know, Nadia Ovaldi has been yeah. really, really good in the playoffs. Diamondbacks are the, the first team in the postseason to, to score four runs off him. I think Ovaldi has only allowed four runs or more in a postseason start twice in his career. And he's, I mean, he has a really, really good track record in the playoffs. So yeah. Diamondbacks really, you know, after... After a, you know, a couple rough innings to start against Eovaldi where he looked really dominant, the Diamondbacks were able to get to him, and, and that was really big. 
But yeah, I mean, you know, one of the narratives that, that I wrote about today in, in my, my article on gophnx.com about, you know, the storylines of this series, one of them was that on paper, the Diamondbacks have a better bullpen than the Texas Rangers. Uh, for, you know, for as good as the Rangers offense is, the Diamondbacks bullpen might be, you know, the, the margin Did that I they are better that? than the Rangers bullpen might be big enough so that, you know, maybe, maybe that difference in, in the offenses doesn't hurt you so much. But it was kind of the opposite story today. Uh, you know, the Diamondbacks go down, uh, you know, go down early, but are able to find their way back, led for most of this game. And then late in the game, when some of those key relievers were in, I mean, the Rangers guys were, were just mowing them down, right? I think the Rangers bullpen six and a third innings in this game, I believe it was. Only two hits allowed, no runs, six strikeouts, no walks. On the Diamondbacks side, there were six walks from the Diamondbacks relievers you know, three runs, I think it was four hits. There was just a lot of traffic on the bases. And that's something we haven't we haven't seen a whole lot of. So, you know, it's just one game. You know, it, it's not necessarily, it doesn't say much that the, the Rangers bullpen outperformed the Diamondbacks bullpen in one game. That was going into this series, theoretically, one of the Diamondbacks bigger advantages and, you know, certainly did not look like that today. Speaking of the bullpen, Jesse, outside of game four in the Philly series, the D-backs were able to kind of squeak by with minimal usage with their bullpen and tonight it seems like they probably maybe used more pitchers than would be ideal. Are you worried at all about the bullpen usage tonight and how that might affect the series down the road when we have to go to a bullpen game? Yeah, I mean, the Diamondbacks made an interesting roster decision in that they went with 14 position players and 12 pitchers, whereas they had 13 yeah. and, and 13 Jace, last Jace round. Peterson. Yeah, yeah. They they opted to get Jace Peterson on the roster just to have you know an extra left-handed bat. They don't have Slade Sacconi, and you know the downside of doing that is that if you you know if you play a few games like this where you're in extra innings, you you know your starter doesn't go super deep. You got to use a lot of the a lot of guys. You don't necessarily have you know quite as many fallback options as as you would. I guess Ryan Nelson is still there who could who could give them some length if they needed to. Uh, but yeah, they don't have as much coverage in what is still a seven game series as, as they had against the Phillies. So I think they'll be fine for tomorrow. You know, you've got you've got an off day after that. Uh, most of the guys who pitched today, I, I would think, would be available tomorrow. Kevin Ginkle did throw 28 pitches in this game. So he's maybe I'm not quite sure how the Diamondbacks would feel about using him tomorrow. But outside of that, everyone should be available and I think it's more of just kind of a big picture question of, you know, if games like this continue to happen where the Diamondbacks might be in a difficult spot. If this were maybe another team and in, in a different postseason, would this game one loss concern you? Or was it just a matter of uh, it was one pitch and also this team was down 0-2 the last round where we're still able to dig it out even without a home field advantage? Does it feel like this is just maybe par for the course uh, uh, for how the, the Diamondbacks entire postseason has been going so far this month? Yeah, I mean, I guess the, you know, the first couple series, this isn't how it went, right? I mean, game one against the Dodgers, they went into Dodger Stadium and scored six one. runs off of Clayton Kershaw. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, that was a big margin of victory. You know, they, they, sw they swept, uh, you know, two games in, in Milwaukee. But yeah, I think there's, there's definitely the sense of belief in the Diamondbacks clubhouse. That this is only one game. D-backs, you know, like I said earlier, Paul Sewald was talking about how you feel pretty good at coming away with a split. The D-backs still have an opportunity to do that here in Texas if they can win tomorrow. So, yeah, you know, it, it's definitely not a, you know, sound the alarm bells. The Diamondbacks, you know, have no chance of winning the series. The Rangers still need to win three more games. There's a lot of baseball left to be played. But this is a tough one for sure. I mean, you know, they're, they're, I mean, this is a pretty this is a pretty great baseball game, if we're being totally honest. It's a yes. great game. Just like a, <laughs> like a general, like like a general baseball yeah. fan. Anyone who is talking about this series as being boring or That's no one's going to watch Jesse. this. Or, yeah, Thank yeah you. I mean, it, it, it is very unfounded. I mean, this was about as good, as entertaining, I would say, of a World Series game one as you could possibly imagine. Fortunately yeah. for the D-backs, they're sort of on the on the wrong side of it. I do want to ask you really quick, Jesse, just because I, I don't know if I can come up with an answer in my own little brain, so I'd rather you try to explain it to me. I don't necessarily understand the decision to go to Ryan Thompson instead of Saul Frank. Do you have any insight there as why Saul Frank wasn't utilized in this situation? Because to me, I, if I'm in that situation, I, I tend to lean towards Saul Frank. Saul Frank has walked a whole lot of guys here in the playoffs, so I, I think, and that's something that Tori was asked about before the game today was, 
you know, against some of those, some of those lefties, uh, you know, some of the key lefties in the, in the Rangers lineup, are you going to, are you going to go a different direction? The D-backs have used Saul Frank in that role uh, pretty consistently here over the last month or so. And Tori was sort of non-committal. He, you know, he obviously doesn't want to tip his hand, but it seemed pretty clear that Saul Frank has kind of moved down the depth chart a little bit. And, it, you know, just given what, what he looked like in some of those outings in Philly, I, just hard to, to trust him to throw strikes right now, frankly. He just hasn't really been able to do that consistently. So, yeah, and it's tough because the, the Rangers have some really good left-handed hitters in the middle of their lineup, right? Corey Seager and, and Evan Carter, they're, they're two and three hitters. The D-backs don't really have a great answer for that out of the bullpen. We saw Joe Mantiply come out as the first guy today. I guess he's maybe at the top of, of the depth chart at this point. Kyle Nelson, yeah. you know, was, was used against uh, lefties in, in that 10th inning. Maybe he's next, and, and then it's Saul Frank. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to go, but it is a bit of a, a weakness in this Diamondbacks bullpen. They've got some good righties, but they don't really have a lefty that they've been able to rely on. Jesse, Thunderbolt 47 is in absolute shambles in our chat right now. My question <laughs> is, since he still hasn't learned his lesson about being super negative about this team, do we ban him for life from this chat, or do we let Stop him continue it. to come in here and have Stop absolute it. meltdowns. I just, mean, Thunderbolts just you just wa- riding the waves of, of being a fan, right? <laughs> like if you if you watch, I know I know you guys are you guys are finding some positivity in this, and I think there's there's good reason to do that. But the Diamondbacks just got walked off in pretty yeah. dramatic fashion yeah. in Game One of the World Series. If if you're a fan of this baseball team and you're not like a little shaken by that uh, not too happy about that then that's a little weird like it's, i think that is just sort of the natural Jesse, reaction that, Je- that Jesse, any man wouldn't Jesse have been broken speaking in shambles damon yeah, is an absolute i don't think shambles i've ever seen damon here. this low. okay yeah. this, thunderbolt this is the thing about thunderbolt he in the regular season i get it Derek. like yeah like the doom and gloom stuff it's the regular season game but in the world series like every game matters we just let one yeah. slip by like yeah. this really hurts yeah, yeah. Yeah. This this game was game so yeah. exciting, and again, I don't think it's to be just a baseball fan to have enjoyed and appreciated this this eleven inning. You know, uh, maybe this falls just a little bit shy of a classic. It was definitely a classic performance, or to use a word I'm sure Damon would use, it, it was a legacy performance for Dolores Garcia. Definitely but, wasn't legacy performance. But I hate you, Patrick. I, love you too, buddy. Uh, arf, arf. So the thing is, this game was four hours and two minutes, That's and a I was long like, game. "Did it feel that no, long?" No, it did not. No. It did not. No, it I'm barely. Like, it barely felt over three I was hours. At three thirty, yeah. uh, three thirty-one. Only because I know like I games are not going that long. I spent a lot of time behind, uh, behind, behind the glass over there. Hiding that was the quickest the four bullpen. hours and two yeah. minutes game. Yeah. I think I've ever like watched. Like yeah. that was great. That was really great. Um, have you Jesse? guys? Oh, go ahead, Jesse. I just want to ask real quick. You guys have probably already touched on this because Patrick is like a walking encyclopedia. <laughs> but have you guys talked about the uh, the historical significance of like ninth inning giving up the game tying two run home run in a sure? World Series road game? This, it, uh, this, it wasn't the encyclopedia it was who came up with it. This it was your girl here. who came up with that. Been okay, the there we go. Facts. There we go. Jesse, All right. yeah. Yeah. Encyclopedia Mactanica over here. Yep, they okay, she got sure it. have allowed a game tying two run home run in the bottom of the ninth three times in their four. Road games in franchise history in the World Series. Is that a threat, Thunderbolt 47? I don't know if that's a threat. I feel like that's very threat. He said, I'll meet y'all at a game next season. Smiley face, thumbs up. That feels very threatening from him. I don't know why. Maybe it's just the (laughs) negativity. Stop stop putting all your anger and energy towards Thunderbolt. He's a a good guy. On a scale of (laughs) one to 10, one being center cut, 60 mile an hour over the heart of the plate, anyone can hit a home run, and 10 just being the most perfect pitch. Where would you give Seawald's home run to Corey Seager? It was up and kind of in. I know Moreno wanted up a little bit higher, but I thought the location was pretty good. Not Definitely not great, but it was pretty good. I, I probably would have it at seven and a half, eight. You got to give that one to Corey Seager. Yeah. Would you have it as high? Yeah, I, I think I'm with you, like seven and a half, eight. Generally, when Paul Seawald gives up homers, and he is a little bit homer prone, that's kind of been – Maybe his biggest flaw ever since he became, you know, one of the one of the better closers a few years ago with with the Mariners. Generally, when he's missing his spot and giving up a homer, he's missing down. His fastball is a rising fastball. It has a lot of deception. It plays best up in the zone. So yeah, you know, if he throws one knee high, uh, you know, belt high, it, it it you know those are oftentimes the ones that we see in the seats. 
this was, I think, a pretty good pitch. Maybe he wanted it a little bit more in on the hands. Maybe he would have wanted it more on the outside corner. I didn't see where where the glove was set up. It was it like it was higher. kind of like in the higher. It was in like the the middle of of yeah. the uh, the top of the zone. So yeah. yeah, maybe I mean maybe they wanted it out of the zone. Maybe they just wanted it you know uh, <laughs> completely out of the zone and, and above the zone. But yeah, it wasn't. It really wasn't a bad a very bad pitch. And uh, Seawald, when he was asked about it after the game. He said that he hasn't looked at it. He didn't really seem all that interested in looking at it tonight, which is I wouldn't want to look at it either. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, he said that uh, some of his teammates had told him that it really wasn't a bad pitch. And you know, at the end of the day, like I said earlier, Corey Seager is is has been on another level this season and in the postseason. He's just been an outrageously good hitter. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess he was he was sitting on on a fastball, and Paul Seawald is one of the more deceptive ones in the game, and somehow he was able to get underneath it and, and, you know, launch it way over the right field fence. Speaking of ridiculously good hitters, Jesse, I have started a campaign and I would like to get you on my side so you can tell me how you feel about this. Um, Adolis Garcia, I think it's time for the Barry Bonds treatment. I don't want to watch anybody <laughs> pitch to him anymore in this entire World Series. Um, Jesse, would you like to join my train for the Barry Bonds treatment? For I'm on the train. I'm on the train. <laughs> Yeah, it's tough. I mean, it has to be like sort of situational, right? I mean, there are some some course, scenarios yeah. where uh, it just w- I mean, it just wouldn't make sense. And of course, I don't know, like, you know, and I mean, in that spot, like, should Miguel Castro have just walked Adolis Garcia? I think there's I think that's a fair, a fair argument, because it was three and one, and three and one on Adolis Garcia is just trouble, right? Yeah, it's just uh, for, maybe. Honestly. But then there's also this other side of like, okay, at that spot in the game, you're literally putting the winning run on base, which is pretty like, that's pretty gutsy to do that. I guess you're talking about the full Barry Bonds treatment, then something like that would still would still be on the table. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's a righty on righty matchup. I, I I mean, I guess, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. Maybe the, maybe the D-backs find a way to win this game if they do that. But that's a pretty tough call to make. All right, Jesse. Well, we will see you tomorrow night uh, from Texas, and hopefully the Diamondbacks can turn things around here uh, in regards to uh, this series. But there's talk about benching Walker for fucking Pavin, and I'm not even going to make oh, you God, answer no. that question. So <laughs> we're not going to talk about that. Do they mean Pavin or do they mean Barry Enright? Because people have made that mistake. absolutely begging to be banned go from this chat. Go eat some barbecue, Jesse. Uh, Jesse, yeah, go, yeah, go get some sleep. Go get some sleep. Go we'll talk to you tomorrow. Step. Get some country cowboy boots. <laughs> He does not, not have enough time for any yeah, of these go, things. I mean, have some fun. Have it's some fun only, while you're there. Like, what, 12? Go still visit time. Dealey Plaza and see where Kennedy was assassinated. That's fun, <laughs> too. Have fun. What the All fuck? right. I'm just wow. saying. He's like got, like, five articles stuff. to write. I just got write. so dark for I, well, no I'm reason. Saying, that's what you do when you're in Dallas. That's what you do. You barbecue right. and go see where Kennedy was assassinated. All right. He's not in Dallas. All right. Bye, Jesse. All right. All right. See you guys. What did you just say? He's, he's in, in a shed. shed. He's not. Oh, he in is Dallas. in a shed. He is in a shed. All yeah, right. But uh, the... Let me clean my notebook out real quick wait, for something. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Because okay. I got to do an ad read and my computer is going to fucking die. And if you guys don't well, stop talking, I am going to be jar. more fucking furious with you. No, I'm not jar. getting a jar. No, no, you made there me curse. Two. I don't know. I don't have any more money on All right, me. All right, Cornholio. Give I'll us, tell give you us this ads. No, you say Cornholio, but that's only because I look so fly with my. Sunglasses <laughs> on. Can is, I? Is this a, uh, is he right. for some TP? No, I was Derek, just telling I don't guys. like this little thing that they have going on. <laughs> they what? They're, just hanging They're out. interrupting me, and not letting me get to ad reads and shit. You've seen it going on no, all night. I, I don't like them. I don't like the two of them together. I'm gonna have like to separate them. Because you fucking see, Jesse about. was here. Jesse no. was a teacher. He would know to separate we're them. Not, but we're of course, tag team. No, that's the thing about this. Did you see that? I just did not like that. I don't like it. No. All right. Well, anyway, uh, like I was trying to get around to, uh, get yourself a pair of premium polarized sunglasses from our friends at Shady Rays. Uh, They do make some incredible gear that is built to last. And more importantly, Mm -hmm. it's not just built to last. They stand by their product with a ridiculous lost and broken replacement plan. Uh, That doesn't make any sense. There absolutely (laughs) no company should give you this much leeway. But if you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they told us they will send you a brand new pair. No questions asked. They have your back long after you purchase. You can shop their entire collection here in town at the Kierling Commons location. It's a full stop shop for all things Shady Rays. And of course, if you also do not love your Shady Rays, if you buy them online or even in the shop, uh, you want to either exchange them for a new pair or return them for free, uh, you can do so. There's no risk when you shop. 
uh, for you can return them for free or exchange them for, for up to 30 days after you purchase. Uh, their team always has your back exclusively for our listeners. Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code PHNX for 50% off two plus pairs of sol- polarized sunglasses. So two or more pairs of sun- sunglasses for you. It's, it's that time of year. Yeah. Get yourself some gifts. Get some stocking stuffers. Uh, get your shit together early, right? Get one your, for you, yeah, one for me. One for me, one for you. You know who else needs to get their shit together early? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> try for yourself the shades <laughs> rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Oh. Can you not interrupt the ad rates with your goddamn negativity? <laughs> Ah! How could I not capitalize on that? It was a softball. You teed it up. Uh. Speaking of softballs, I mean, I don't. I mean, I mean, I'm reading an ad read. Is what I'm reading. Um, but I will say this: get yourself the fucking shirt of a fucking dangerous team. Uh, uh, no, that's I'm allowed to do that one. Even he signed. Was it the st- first one? The first one was egregious. The was, second uh, one was part right, of the shirt. All right, all right. Uh, I'm going to give you a warning on that we're, one. We're a connected team and get the shirt of a connected team that is a dangerous team. Uh, of course, like I said, if you get uh, your diehard membership, you can get the shirt for free. If you are a diehard, you can get 20% off your purchase of this shirt or any of these wonderful shirts in our playoff locker. They're so nice. They are some incredible shirts in there. We don't so. have any in the Rockies locker. Yeah, there is some new <laughs> ones uh, coming out as well. So make sure to oh, uh, stay tuned open. to the locker. I don't even know what those are. Yeah, all right. And again, if you're a diehard, you get 20% off all future purchases. Get that first shirt for free. You also get a shirt uh, for free or, sh- or a hat for free every single year that you remember. You get discounts with our partners. Of course, you get Jesse's uh, exclusive newsletter just for diehards. You also get access to all of our content. You get access to our Discord Lounge, which is the best place to be an Arizona sports fan, and absolutely so much more. So we are thrilled with all that we have to offer, and we want you to come join us today. Now, Patrick, please clean out your notebook. What else you got for us? What did all we right. miss? So Evan Carter, we talked pregame, 21 that years old, 59 kid is days. incredible. Hitting third in the lineup. Had two doubles today. Yep. So uh, that was his eighth double of the postseason, most for any rookie in any postseason. Whew. Gives him nine extra base hits, most by any player age wow. 21 or younger in the postseason. He's and a problem. Ouchie. 21 years and, and 59 days. Fourth youngest player with multiple hits in his World Series debut. Older only then, 19-year-old Andrew Jones back in 1996. Hey, Proud Papa. That's a name. Andrew Jones. That's, hey, that's, yeah. that's a connected D-backs that's a connected, reference. Yep. Mickey Mantle, 20 years old in 1952. And then a guy who's kind of been in the news and I'm sure will be all off season for the San Diego Padres. That was 20 oh, yeah. year, years old and 362 days old. Juan, Juan Soto, Soto back in 2019 when he won a ring. Apparently there are rumors that he might be going to the Chicago Cubs. I don't um, can we talk about one thing really quick that I don't think we've talked about enough? Yeah. Sure. What is going on with Christian Walker? Well, that you sound like 75 of our chat uh, so far. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, I, I'm I don't here know. to advocate for the chat because I do want to talk about this because what the fuck? <laughs> Hello, three Ks was not was not good tonight. Christian Walker, for we sure. I don't know if anyone's told you, Christian. Um, we are playing in a World Series right now, and it would be great if you would like to contribute offensively and maybe put some runs on the board, maybe hit the ball. I don't know, but um, it's really weird, and I'm not enjoying watching him not hit baseballs. I think the problem sometimes when you're in a slump in baseball is you keep trying harder and harder which doesn't permit you to come out of the slump right yeah. like you can't hit three home runs and one at bat and sometimes that seems like what he's trying to do he seems very frustrated at the plate he seems like he is not taking good at bats you know that's what we said about Alec Thomas like Alec Thomas at one point was just very impatient and was mm-hmm. you know grounding out softly to the right side every single time and then i swear you saw him just starting to take those at bats during the postseason of all times of all times for him to step up was when we started seeing Alec Thomas take solid at bats. And the, the, the solid part is seeing a lot of pitches, you know, fouling stuff off, getting, giving your uh, self a chap, an opportunity to see a pitch where the pitcher makes a mistake or see a pitch that you like that you, you know, know is coming and have a chance to take a good cut at it. And so far Thomas is seeing those positive results in the postseason when he struggled during the regular season. And now we have Christian Walker, who is struggling in, in a very, not even in a similar way. I mean, even maybe even more because of how bad some of Walker's at-bats have been during the postseason. Well, and I think, too, it's extra frustrating because, you know, a lot of people were saying, well, Corbin Carroll struggled and, um, 
but Corbin Carroll's young. He's <laughs> hello. Like he hasn't ha- doesn't have a lot of major league service time under his belt. And the same cannot be said for Christian Walker. So it's even harder to try to find some explanation because a lot of, you know, what Corbin's going through can maybe chalked up to inexperience, nerves, yeah. whatever it might be. Yeah. But it's like Christian Walker, we don't have that excuse yeah. for you, Christian. So yeah. it's extra hard to try to like justify what we're watching happen right now. I mean, sort of- he, he at least walked tonight, but I mean, mm-hmm. that's not the most encouraging production you know for a by guy that goes over for the rest of the night and I it's think, it's I, been all all postseason yeah and, and, and michael i think to your point with with some of the young guys on the roster is that i don't necessarily know what you would do to the lineup differently you right. know fam is is starting to heat up obviously yeah. Yeah. right with uh, mm-hmm. uh with the home run tonight and i think what uh it must have been was it game six that he went uh back to back with uh with Lourdes Gurriel. uh but you know he's kind of heating up a little bit Guriel, maybe, you know, he kind of can be hot and cold. And after that, Alec Thomas, you've seen him come through in big spots. But again, in a higher leverage situation, he's another one of those 23-year-old guys that uh, you want to set them up for success. So yeah. maybe you want that pressure on 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 a walker who, again, last series he was taking those walks and he was passing the baton. There's still really nobody behind him that you can pass that baton to. So I, I don't know. I, it would be a strange creative solution. And I don't know if, if Tori would be interested in doing something like this and, and you're going to, you're not going to like it, move him into the third spot in the lineup. Yeah. And so, you know, all no, right. He, need, he, need, he needs to move, but, you're, I, but I'm saying moving move. him up. I'm saying actually move him up to third and now Moreno is going to protect him. Maybe he sees a couple more, you know, better pitches to hit. And if he does get on base via the walk, now you've got Moreno to, to possibly that drive could him possibly in. be it. And I think that's the frustration with a lot of people in the yeah. chat right now yeah. is that he's still batting fourth. He should not be. And I don't care where they move him. He needs to move somewhere. It's anywhere. reminiscent of times where our offense struggled, where the Diamondbacks had that almost that it, it was like a, you know, you remember this from the little league days, mm-hmm. easy out. Right. I mean, you know, and, and it's one of those situations where no matter what kind of rally they have going on, no matter what kind of offensive uh, you know, kind of thing they have in the works, whatever they have cooking, it it's snuffed out at times by guys uh, this season, and not Christian Walker throughout the regular season, but by other guys that they that you know you just consistently saw those those runs get snuffed out by you know, and that you just could guarantee that they were going to at times hit into a double play or just hit into the out that was unproductive and not allow those big runs to score right. So the Diamondbacks need to get a find a way to figure it out, and I I, I would not. I mean, I don't know. I, I I think that one of those answers could be moving Christian Walker out of that that fourth spot. They they have not shied away from those difficult decisions where, True. Mm-hmm. you know, you do, you don't really want to move that that guy that you know is your slugger that that's your power hitter out of that spot. But when he's ineffective there, you got to try something different. And I think even Christian would understand that at this point. I also but. agree with the chat. Christian Walker shave shave right now go home find a razor go to the hotel room ask somebody shave your face <laughs> it's gotta yeah. go uh walker had only one extra base hit in that philly series he had a double against the dodgers double and a homer in 14 plate appearances and then one double against milwaukee so four extra base hits here so far in the postseason yeah, it feels like he's games. just he's running out of gas because it's the performances are getting worse and worse as we move along and again the, the Diamondbacks need him. I mean, I know that could tell. And need the glove. Or, you definitely need the you glove. You definitely oh, yeah. need no, the glove. No, it's, no like, doubt it's, about that. it's like Alec Thomas. It's the same thing. When yeah. Thomas struggled, yeah. you just have a hard time having anybody out there in center, center field, field otherwise mm-hmm. because you're almost willing to put up with his struggles due to how good his defense is. And same thing with Christian Walker. You're just not going to have anybody play the, the position over there any better. And honestly, I don't know how much more production you're going to get out of a Paven Smith, and I don't know if that was a yeah, serious. Yeah, people saying that Paven needs to be from the lineup are a little. Yoshi crazy. might Yoshi might be drunk, but that's fine. He's <laughs> definitely drunk on power because he keeps that's talking a little about extreme. Let's not firing me. The that's for sure. But uh, we got some more super chats uh, to get to Damon, if you don't yeah. mind. Uh, of course, uh, shout out to Chili Boots again, yeah. our friend yeah. from the Minnesota Twins fan base. Says hey. you'll get the next one. Bite back. Chili, Ooh, we like love that. that you're with us. Appreciate that. Uh, Sports Hero says, D-backs in six, you're welcome. We appreciate love you. Love that energy. Love wow. that energy. Uh, Carlos says, this hurts because of how they lost, but getting Seawald's first blown save out of the way in game one isn't the worst way to reset the clock. Yep. D-backs in six. Thank you, Carlos. First uh, first run allowed this postseason by Seawald. Yeah, I don't like that part. But Cogs did uh, suggest 
something ridiculous in the chat. Don't think I fucking missed that, Cogs. Uh, he <laughs> said something in the chat about that Seawall was going to blow another save in game two because that's how things went in 2001. God damn it, Cogs, you're going too far. That is too far, uh, and we will DFA you again. Don't forget, I will definitely take back that King Snake that we gave you. We can retroactively do that, by the way. Uh, Benjamin Hunley says Perdomo was awesome in this game. He absolutely was. was. Did not give him enough attention tonight. Uh, one for three with that one one run scored. And uh, yeah, he was just incredible in the field as well. Started uh, a nice so double play. Every bat was, was competitive. Needed. And I think that's the thing JP. is what he's saying right there. Every bat was, every at bat was competitive. And again, mm -hmm. there's just something about like, I don't care if you get out. But if you see seven, eight pitches before you get out, yeah. I still feel like that's a win. And that's yeah. just because I've watched way too much baseball. But he said every bat was competitive, got a couple of hits, uh, excellent sacrifice, great defense. He's a winning player. I think I said that verbatim. Almost verbatim. Literally. Yeah, he is the, the guy Perdomo. that gets things started for this yeah. team. Wow. He's always in the mix when things are, are starting to, to heat up. Yep. Always. Yeah. Totally. Uh, Tony, thank you again, Tony. So D-backs lost two incredibly tough games in 2001. Uh, World Series and still won it all. This series is far from over. Nice. Let's go, Tony. Let's go, Tony. And George uh, W. Bush also threw out a first pitch there, too. So, I mean, again, we know uh, the coincidence. It's going to be fine. Caesar says Derek is his definition of the ops. Shake my head. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> it was that. right you after bet, your bet. bet. <laughs> oh, your bet no. Hit. Absolutely not. Absolutely you not. You are an op. No, this is. Oh, now. <laughs> see, that's the thing with you people. Oh, when it doesn't you work, people? now I'm the op, right? But when it was working, you guys all rode with me, right? You're all on my side. <laughs> Uh, Benjamin says, please give me a clip of Perdomo's postgame comments. He's the only one who cheers me up after a loss. That's true. I wish he we had some Jerry some P bangers. content. Yeah, we I need that so. delicious Jerry P content. I, I will always run through a wall for that man. Carlos says, when Seawalk slumps, he shaves. The beard's got to go. That backs up what Mac was saying. And Shave Doug it. Nalick says, I was afraid of Seawall blowing a save going into the series. Oh. We need seven innings out of Kelly or it's 0-2. Uh, I don't. I don't know uh, if things are that drastic, but six, I do. I do think we need a really six, good start, and I think we need a good outing a from them. One. You know, I mean, uh, of course, we definitely need the offense to show up like they did tonight, uh, and more so, right? Like more so. So hopefully, that's what we will see. But uh, do you guys have anything else after this one? Because uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm cautiously optimistic yeah, about this so. World Series going forward, and somehow even after a loss. I, I am more optimistic after seeing the way the Diamondbacks played this team tonight. I, I know that sounds crazy, sure. but uh, this one, this one's on Paul Seawald. And again, we haven't seen Paul Seawald do that often. He has been the patron saint of high leverage innings for this team. Uh, Paul saves, you know that. And of course, uh, I think we're going to get back to, to our winning ways, hopefully here in game two. Yeah. I, I think the Diamondbacks are kind of getting back to their old school winning ways. I think Jesse tweeted out that, uh, at one point, if you go back to the fifth inning of game six, the Diamondbacks had stolen like 11 bases yeah. in 18 innings. And Create so that chaos, that baby. regular season chaos, that chaos that they yeah. have, uh, that, that worked for them for 84 wins during the regular season, coupled with this new kind of chaos with, uh, with somebody new every night kind of chipping in, whether it's from the bullpen or the lower part of the lineup, that kind of chaos. I think, you know, coupling both of those things together should definitely provide a lot of hope. It's going to be a long series. I said Diamondbacks in seven, so that means they're going to lose three games along the way. You got one out of the way. Seawald, you know, got a loss, got a blown save out of the way, and now uh, the Diamondbacks are still going to win more than they're going to lose. I still believe that. Listen, Diamondbacks fans, I feel you. It's tough out here being an Arizona sports fan, and I know... <laughs> A lot of us are quick to jump the gun because we are a storied, tortured fan base. But I know two things to be true. Ooh. One, yes, we lost this game and it sucked, but it was still a good game. And two, if the Diamondbacks are going to do anything, it's going to be fucking answering back. So, yes, we are down right now, but by no means are we out. This is going to be another six games. It's going to be a battle, but I need y'all to strap in, yeah. put your big boy pants on, and stick with this team because I know it sucks right now, but I have complete faith that this team is going to answer back 
and it's going to be okay. And I know it's hard because we're Diamondbacks fans and <laughs> it's scary out here, but this is our year, damn it. I don't know how many times I'm going to have to speak into existence, but I will if it means this team will win because I can't, we can't make it this far to only make it this far. So just strap up, you guys. It's going to be fine. Just hang in there with us. <laughs> it's not over till it's over. It's not over till the fat lady sings and she has her mouth shut right now. So hold on. Just hold on. Damon, Damon is so unmoved by your <laughs> motivational speech. I have I, never I, I seen it, it fall. On deafer ears than David's I'm reaction. I'm just going to start until the home myself. team loses. The Rangers did what they were supposed to do, okay? Right. It's fine. Hey, it's an- fucking fine. Hey, answer backs, meet answer <laughs> Mac. You got the answer. That's the answer. answer. Mac. It's the answer Mac. <laughs> ski to y'all, y'all. Ski, a ski, a ski let's not to forget. you all. Let's of not course. forget. BC, yeah. suck it. Yeah, let's not Let's not stop it. I'm, I'm holding on to my suck it's, but I've got them in there, so you better be careful because there will be a long list of suck it's coming as soon as Diamondbacks win a game, okay? So Apparently, BC, stay off my shit list. Yeah, there's stuff about a Roger uh, Beeshan's football slider that they should all be throwing, but I'm not even. <laughs> yeah, sure. Roger I've been, I've been loving this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean, the football he slider, is, it's he huge. Is, uh, he is relentless. He, he is, is relentless. relentless. That's uh, what I love about I him. I know. Roger, you gotta we, appreciate come on. It's a football slider, it. not a game. sweeper, right? Yeah. Yeah. Come like on. Come on. Yeah, a slider. A good captain always goes down with their ship. Yeah. All right. Ride or well, die for these D-backs. Uh, good game to all of you Rangers fans. I think there's two of you in our chat. So, I mean, definitely not the presence that we got from Phillies fans, but we respect you. At least Rangers fans are respectable, nice human we'll beings. We'll see how things go. Well, this is just game one. It started that faith. way. It started that way with the Phillies fine. fans. Too, no, but things turned really fast. There's but, also a great Braves fan here. Yeah, it's I mean, fine. I appreciate that. Yeah, go to war for John us. John Blaze. So. John Can Blaze is my new hero. Was, so, during the PHLY, like, post games yeah. when they were playing the the Phillies and Braves he was in their post game chat oh. starting just absolutely just going to war oh. and then when they were playing the, like when they were playing the D-backs he would stay in those chats <laughs> and create war and ride for us and then he'd yeah. come into our chats after the game so he's definitely He's been pulling for all us. All right. He's well, I guy. appreciate him and all of you for being here in the chat. Of course, you guys can follow us on Twitter. I am at cap underscore caveman with a K. Uh, <laughs> Michaela is at Michaela E. Perkins. Patrick is at Patrick D. Lions. Of course, we are all Damon's dogs. Arf, arf. Uh, of course, you can follow him at Damon Dog. Arf. That's D A W G. No fucking barking tonight from Damon Dog. I said wolf, wolf. Wolf, wolf. I said arf, arf. All right. Well, so that's two I to just, one on the arf. I, I get See, it. See, now you guys are doing what I'm yeah, doing. Yeah, I know. Whatever. But anyway, uh, yeah. follow him at Damon Dog. It's right. D A W G. Of course, our show God. is at PHNX <laughs> underscore D backs. And all roads do lead to at PHNX underscore sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thank you guys again for your time. We will get them tomorrow, and we will be back tomorrow yeah. for the pregame show. Same time, 4.30, every single day of the World Series, 4.30. Join us for the pregame show. Yeah. And then we'll be back uh, about 15 minutes afterwards uh, for our postgame show, depending on how fast we can wipe our tears from events like this and get our shit together. But uh, in the meantime, we do appreciate you guys so much for stopping by. Uh, thank you for your time. And remember, kids, baseball is fun, but it's so much more fun when you don't Blow the goddamn game in the bottom of the ninth inning. Y'all silly like the mayor. 